Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your truth is marching on and it's filling the whole earth. And men are responding to your word in sincerity. And they are being changed and they are being transformed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man. Now let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We are in verse 26. Praise God. Now I was explaining something yesterday before I realized my time was up. You know, sometimes you just want to go on and go on and go on. <laughs> Praise God. All right then. So it says, For the earth, verse 26, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not, if an unbeliever, bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go. Now, there are, there are certain people who will tell you, look, uh, we're having a feast and we're inviting you. And you know, you can't just say no to them. Same thing for conscience sake. See, because you don't want to create strife. And now he says, if you are disposed to go now, meaning you don't have fellowship or you don't have something else important that you are doing at that time and you can't tell a lie, you know. He said, if you're disposed to go, whatsoever is said before you, eat. You know, I, I heard that some believers, you know, all over the world, the Islamic uh, nations, they just celebrated um, their salah. And, and this is the salah where they kill ram and then they eat and, and distribute even to their neighbors. Now that's, that's what their, their, their law commands. And I hear that some Christians, after receiving the, the, the ram that is already fried, they, they went to fry the ram with anointing oil, <laughs> thinking the anointing oil will... will um, will neutralize every incantation and everything that has been done to them. And that, that is very silly. I wonder how you enjoy the meat after refrying it again. That is silly. If you were going to do that, you shouldn't have even taken it in the first place. Now, this, this is what Paul is saying here. He's dealing with such things. He says, whatever is said before you, eat. I'm going to say, eh, ah, thank you. You people are enjoying. You know, you know what? Just give me my own as take away. Eh, I cannot eat here. Eh, I'm fasting. And yeah, you know you're lying. You're not fasting that day. It's better you don't even go at all if you have a good reason not to go. But if you go, then it says, eat whatsoever is set before you. Eat. Asking no questions for conscience sake. Don't start asking, eh, how did you people fry this meat? Eh, when you people kill this animal? Don't ask all those questions. Two things he has said now. When you buy things from the market, eat it. Don't ask any questions for conscience sake. Two, he said, when they invite you for a feast and you have to go, eat whatever is said before you. And what if they put poison in it? Didn't he say we shall drink any, if you drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt us? Come on now. We are believers in Jesus Christ. Our Father. He said it in verse 20. He says, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So nobody can hurt you with such things. But when you begin to live your life in suspicion, now you're already living in unbelief. So that thing that you're afraid of will catch up with you. But when you eat with all thanksgiving in your heart and you bless the Lord for what is set before you, eat. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idol, eat not for, the, for his sake that showeth it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thy own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? You see that now? Now, supposing you get on that feast and then they say, hey, this thing we want to eat, we, we sacrifice it to our idol. He says, when, when they say that, you excuse yourself. Not because if you eat anything is going to happen, but because of the person who is saying it. 
you show some it's the kind of respect that you should not to the idol no to the person see because it says look you can eat it but the signal you're going to send to that person will be wrong so it's better you don't eat it so now he's saying be mindful of those that are around you as I said before, he said, everything is lawful, but not everything is expedient. And that's the attitude we must have as, as children of God. He says, <clears throat> verse 30, For if I, by grace, be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Wherefore, therefore, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. God. He is just saying be considerate in all things. Just be considerate. If you choose to eat, eat to the glory of God. Eat unto a testimony. If you choose not to eat, then choose not to eat for the glory of God also. Because God meets your need. Don't go see and say, ah man, I better eat this food. If not, I'll be hungry. Now this one I've seen food. No, 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 no. God can always supply. He can always supply. So don't go there. I must eat this food because hey. No, 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 no. That's wrong. So eat to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. See, he's, he's coming from the previous chapter, where he says, I became all things to all men. See, so I mingle with everybody. Now, when you mingle with everybody for the gospel's sake, not because you're hungry, for the gospel's sake, you have a purpose to win some. Now, when you go to win some, when they offer you anything, then you better eat with them and enjoy with them. Why? So that in that way, you can win some. You know, some people, you don't know this. Some people just feel it's such an honor that you received from them. And then when you do that, you open the door to minister the gospel to them. You see? So we must be sensitive in these areas. Very, very sensitive in this area. Do what is right. But if your conscience pricks you, if your conscience is, if you don't feel right concerning it, then excuse yourself. Because sometimes we, we are on different level of knowledge. If you feel you don't trust your heart, then leave it. Grow some more. See? Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Now, we, we just finished chapter 10, so let's go into chapter 11. Let's just go into it already. Praise God. Be ye, death, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So follow me as I'm following Christ. Now remember, this letter was not written. In, it's just a letter. So we're reading that letter. Praise God. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Okay, now we have reached here. Mm -hmm, praise God. The head of every man, the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now he is talking when he says the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is the man. It doesn't mean every man is the head of every woman. He's talking about Christ, the husband, the wife. You need to understand this. So, so the head of every wife is the husband. That's what he's saying. Now he says, and the head of Christ, because some men, some men go, people you don't even know, a lady you don't even know, you say, hey, I'm, I'm your head. I'm your head. Okay. Then be the head and take leadership and provide. <laughs> Praise God. And he said, well, why, why, you know, why, why, why should I? You say, you're the head. All right. Then. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. Now, prophesying here means teaching. Not, though, thus saith the Holy Ghost, I will do this, I will do that. 
that's not what he's just talking about. He's talking about teaching also, because in the New Testament church, another way to, of prophesying is teaching. So what I'm even doing right now, I'm teaching, I'm prophesying. Why, why is teaching prophesying? Because I'm speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's prophecy. So he says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonored her head. For that is even all one, as if she, as if she were shaven. It says, look, when a man is praying or prophesying, when a man is teaching, and he covers his head, he's dishonored. You know, some, you know, you look at this scripture and you just like, what's going on here? A man covers his head. He's dishonoring his head. So a man should not cover his head. Okay, fine. So that he doesn't dishonor his head. Okay. A woman doesn't cover her head like the man. She dishonors her head. I want to follow this chapter now. You know how he started? He said, be ye followers of me even as I am also a follower of Christ, right? He said, follow me, follow me as I'm following Christ. Now he began to bring this in. And there is a bit of inconsistency in this statement, if you, if you follow it carefully. There is a bit of inconsistency. And like we've read previously, you know, he will say, look, this one is the Lord that is commanding. Some he says, this one is not the Lord. Now let's read further. He said, for verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Now, follow this. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Wonderful. You see, okay, you know, I told you something one time. I said, when, when, as a woman, when you get married, the heart of God concerning this is this. You have no right to ask God for anything. Anything you want, you ask your husband. And what does that mean? Your husband must be capable enough to produce it, not because he has the money, but because he's got faith. And he can give you access to God who provides everything. And that's the authority level that marriage brings in. And he's talking in the contents of marriage. So he's saying that the man is the glory and the image of God. Then the woman is the glory of the man. But you know naturally, when, 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 your, when your wife don't look good, it tells a lot about you. If your wife don't look good and you look good, something is wrong with you. So it is your responsibility as a man to make sure your wife is always looking good because she reflects your glory. Someone needs to just see your wife and, and, and by extension even your children. Someone needs to see your children. Then they will know that ah, there is glory in that place. But when your children are just there, you know, nothing glorious about their life. When your wife is just there, she dresses anyhow. She, you don't let your wife uh, look beautiful. You, I don't know for what, whatever reason. It is your glory that you are displaying out there. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Now, you know, this is the truth. From the beginning, God looked at man and said, mm, it is not good that man should be alone. I will create him a help suitable for him. So the reason man was, woman was physically created is so that she will help the man. You get it, right? So she will help the man. So that's why he's saying here that the woman was created because of the man. There's a reason for that. Even though they were created on the same day when God created them. Praise God. Now, we, we need to stop here for now because we're out of time. But we, we, we are going to continue from here tomorrow. Now, I know, I know your ears are itching. Oh yeah, explain, explain. We're going to do that tomorrow, praise God. Father, we bless you for today. You are glory and the lift up of our head. Thank you for opening our eyes to your truth. And we
we receive the blessing of understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen.